I want to pray. Andrew said someone's praying for you. And I thought, you know, before I tell you how you can come back to God, like Andrew did that night when he was 27, I'd like to pray for all of you here tonight. Many college kids, many high school kids, young working men and women, as well as dads and moms. I want to pray to God that tonight, in the next few minutes, when I give you the invitation, you will come to Christ and you'll never forget it. And in the future, you'll be like Andrew. And you will tell your children and grandchildren when you get old. That's when it happened on the 20th of March. Back in Phoenix, Arizona, I gave my life to Christ and I've been a new person. So let's bow in prayer before God. I want to ask God to bless each one of you who still don't know Jesus Christ. Oh God, our Father, you are such a good Father. It says in your word that God is a good God. And oh God, you have been good to us. You made us in our mother's womb. You put us in this world. You've protected us till this day. And oh God, you see all the young people here tonight. You see the dads and moms and even some grandpas and grandmas. Oh God Almighty, speak to the heart of every young woman that's here today. Speak to the heart of every young guy at whatever age. And oh Holy Spirit, open their heart, open their soul, open their spirit so that when you invite them to receive your son, they will run to Jesus Christ, find forgiveness and start a new life, a holy life, a beautiful life, a clean life, and have the assurance of eternal life. Oh God, help us to speak well of Jesus, and we ask it in his name. Amen. 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 I want to tell you in a few minutes with the help of God how you tonight, if you've wandered away from God, how you can come back to God tonight. And what happened to Andrew just a few years ago in Kingston, Jamaica can happen to you today in this park right here by the lake. You know, here's the story that was read a few minutes ago. God took this young man. He wandered away. And I wonder how many of you, I'm not going to ask for hands, how many of you were brought up in the Roman Catholic Church? How many of you were brought up in a Protestant church? How many of you perhaps were brought up in a Pentecostal church or an Evangelical church or a Baptist church or a Presbyterian, some kind of religious background? I'll bet you a high percentage of you. And yet somehow, at some point in your life, instead of going God's way, you somehow took a wrong turn. And now you sort of walked away from God. Now you're here tonight because God brought you here. Maybe your heart is tender. Maybe your conscience is open. But I want to tell you guys, the sooner you give your life to Christ, the better for you. I tell you, I did it when I was 17 and a half. I really got serious with God. And I said, God, I'm looking around. And it was carnival in Argentina like Mardi Gras down in Louisiana. Not a good thing. And we were with a bunch of college kids. And there was going to be a big dance. And you use what you call it, masquerade and so on. And you, you go dance and you drink and you fool around. And I said, God, if I go to this party, I'm going to wreck my life. And at night, I went to bed. I was alone at my grandma's house. And totally alone. And I said, God, get me out of going to this dance. I love my friends. I love them, but I'm going to wreck my life. Save me. Rescue me. Don't let me go. And the most amazing thing happened. The next morning I wake up and my mouth was swollen like I had a tennis ball in my mouth. And I thought, I didn't punch myself. Some bug must have bit me or God just did it. But my mouth looked terrible. You don't go to a dance looking like you got a baseball uh, thing in your mouth. And I said, that's it. The Lord got me out of going. And from that night on, I hadn't been reading the Bible for a while. I got myself a new Bible. I said, I'm going to walk with God. I'm not going to run away. But Andrew did the other, uh, the different direction. From about age 14, I began to notice that he was going, disappearing. He thought he put me on. I may be old, but I'm not stupid. Uh -huh. I would check up his bedroom and the window was open and Andrew wasn't there. I kept quiet because I wondered what in the world was going on. One night he comes in and he smelled a beer from six feet away. 
He said, how are you, Dad? How are you doing? And he didn't want to get close. And I thought, oh, God, this kid is going really badly. And I want to tell you guys, don't wreck your life. The Bible says the thief comes only to steal, steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's Satan. But God says, Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it in abundance. And you know, when I look at America today, you guys, this country is a disaster now. Do you know I told some of you last night, 43%, listen to this, 43% of all babies born in America are born of single moms. Now, we're not pointing the finger at single moms, but you know what those kids are going to be like when they grow up? They're going to be angry. They're going to be mad. They're going to be upset. They're going to feel the pressure, the, the lack of finances, the burden that it brings on society. And it all looks like a big fun deal. Oh, yeah, let's have sex. Bah, bah, bah. Here we go. And month, nine months later, here's the little baby. And there's no father. And people don't know what to do with you. And then the baby grows up. I tell you, the pain is unbelievable. And Satan is the enemy of the human race. Nowadays, nobody wants to talk about it. But what is it that creates wars? Why is there divorce? Why do good people mess up? Why do highly educated people with doctorates from Harvard and Yale and Columbia University and even ASU, how come they misbehave so badly? They have a good education, lots of cash, maybe a fancy home on the hills and another one for vacation, but their life is a disaster. Why, why, why? I've had people who were successful come to me and say, Palau, I don't get it. I'm intelligent. I've got smarts. I've been around, and yet my life is a disaster. Why? And there are two answers. One is, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. You know your heart, my heart. We are born with a bent towards evil. And then there is Satan. Oh, a few people laugh at Satan, but look around and you see the results. And so Satan comes to destroy young people. My heart is broken when I look at American kids, beautiful girls, handsome young guys, but their lives are a disaster. They sleep around like cats, thinking that sex is all there is, and then they want to find a super wife and a super husband. Something's got to change in America, and this can change in your heart as a woman, as a man. God is a good God. He's a wonderful Father. And he loves you tonight. Give him a hand. Yes, give him a hand because he is a wonderful God. And so in the story of this young man, the dad was a fabulous dad. Linz was telling me back there, this young man had two phrases. First he said, Father, give me, give me, give me. When he repented and came back, he said, Father, make me, make me, make me. He started out selfishly. His dad was obviously wealthy. And he says to him, Father, give me the part of the inheritance that belongs to me. God could have said to me, you little sneaky fellow, you're not going to get a penny from me. But God gave him free will. And he said, give me what belongs to me. And the Bible says the father gave him what was coming to him. And he took the money and he took off a few days later to a far away country, as far away as he could from his dad, just like Andrew did from my wife and me. But the father was a good father. And you know, dear friends, it breaks your heart when you hear Americans blaspheme God, curse God, insult God. And you know who does it the most? Some of the most intellectual people in the land. Some professors in universities seem to have a campaign to steal the faith of young people. I read the other day that up to 80% of kids who come from homes that are Christ-centered go to a university and in a year they begin to deny the faith. And they ask me why. I think I've got the answer. It's because you were brought up in a Christian home like Andrew. And you were brought up in the things of God, whatever that may be your background. But you personally didn't know Jesus Christ. 
And so you go to the university, and they seem to be having such fun getting drunk. Oh, it's such fun to be drunk. It is really make monkeys of themselves, laugh at stupid jokes that aren't even funny, do ridiculous things. And girls, they get the girls drunk so they're able to have sex with them and then throw them out like a, like a dirty rag. And you go to college, and in college they have these binge drinking. Like that's the epitome of brilliance. Get drunk. That's a real man. Oh, yeah. And now women, women that grab a beer like men used to do, and they drink from a beer to show that they're real women today. Guys, that is destructive. That is satanic. And people deny Jesus Christ 80% when they go to university. If you knew Jesus Christ, you wouldn't throw him under the bus just because some professor says, ha, 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 I got a degree from Oxford. Ooh, wow. I got a PhD from Harvard. There's no God. Are you going to do that to Jesus Christ? Are you going to throw him under the bus? If you really know him, you know that he's the son of God and that he protects you. And he loves you. And he wants you. And he's got a plan for your life. But if you listen to Satan and all his spokesmen, it'll wreck your life. Okay, give him a hand if you want. Sure. So this young fellow in the Bible, he takes off for a faraway country. And the Bible says, first, he went far away. Just like Andrew did. He goes off to Boston, Massachusetts. He couldn't go any further and still be in the USA. Second, he squandered his wealth. He had lots of blessings, but he squandered them. He lost them. Thirdly, it says, he did it in wild living. Fourthly, it says, he wasted everything. Everything he had was gone. And you know, many of you guys, you've squandered your life. And you're here tonight. And God brought you. And he says, girl, I love you, woman. I gave you a lot of gifts. I made you a virgin. You've given up your virginity when you were half drunk, sleeping with a smart aleck who made you drunk just to abuse you. And you squandered what I gave you. But girl, I love you, says the Lord. And I'm willing to forgive you and start all over again. God will, yes, he will forgive you and start all over again. A friend of mine who's a Christian psychiatrist calls this a second virginity. If you lost your virginity as a guy or a girl, God will so forgive you and you will be so born again that you'll be able to start over as though the old virginity was back. That, I think, is a great gift of God. And so this young guy goes off. And he messes around and he messes his life. And then suddenly a severe famine came over the land. And you know what happens in life? You disobey God. You rebel. You throw off all restraint. You go to college and you say, man, I'm free. And you, Satan makes you believe that you're free. In fact, you're getting deeper and deeper into slavery. And you don't even realize it. You become addicted, they say nowadays. Andrew used the right word. You're a sinner. That's what it is. And all of us are sinners. But you can become so entangled that you mess up your life. And when he had lost everything, he slept around with prostitutes. He spent all his money. He was living a wild life, which seems so much fun. But it's a deceit of Satan. One day, he had nothing to eat. He's far away from his dad and his brother and his family. And he's tried to look for work. But the famine was so bad, they wouldn't give him any work except to take care of pigs. For a Jewish person, to take care of pigs is the worst insult. But it was all he could get. And it says that he sat around with the pigs and wished he could eat the pods that the pigs were eating. But nobody gave them to him. And one day, he's seated in disaster among a bunch of pigs. And he says to himself, how many workers back at my dad's farm have plenty to eat? And here I'm dying of hunger. And then he makes a radical decision. He says, I will get up. I will go back to my father. 
And I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. Make me like one of your workers. And a few days later, Jesus said, the young fellow got up. He went back to his father. He must have been trembling. He was memorizing what he was going to say. He planned his confession. And when he, his dad saw him, the Bible says, the father was waiting for him. Perhaps several years had gone by, we don't know. But the dad was waiting for his son. And tonight, guys, girls, men and women, God is waiting for you. Yes, God is calling you back to himself. Come back to God. Come back to God tonight. The Lord Jesus one day said to a big crowd, and I want you to hear it like he's telling you tonight. Come to me, all of you who are tired and burdened, and I will give you rest. Come to Christ tonight. And the, fa the Bible says that the Father was looking in the distance, and he saw in the distance a figure walking towards the house. And there was something about the way this fellow walked that the dad said to himself, it's my boy. He was bedraggled. He had no shoes. He must have been a disastrous looking guy. But in the distance, the dad saw him and he said, that's my boy. And the Bible says the father ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him over and over and over again. And the son says, Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. I am not worthy to be called your son. But the father stopped him right there. He wasn't able to finish the confession. The father called his staff and said, Quick, get him a new pair of shoes. Get him a new suit. Put a ring on his finger. Put shoes on his feet. Let's kill the big cow. Let's have a party. This my son was dead and he's alive. He was lost and he's found. And they began to party that night because the son came home to Jesus Christ. Tonight, here in Arizona, God is saying to you, come back, come back, come back. The Lord, your Father in heaven says, I love you, man. I love you, girl. You come back home. I will give you the embrace of my love. I will give you the kiss of my forgiveness. My son Jesus died on the cross, Jesus says. So that I could forgive you a hundred percent. And oh my dear friends here in Arizona. God loves you with an everlasting love. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. So that whoever believes in him should not mess up and perish. But have everlasting life. And God is calling you. Yes, cheer for him. Because he is worth it. And you know the good thing about this boy, when he realized what a mess he'd made of his life, he was honest. He didn't make excuses. He didn't justify himself. He simply said, I will get up and go to my father. And the Bible says he got up and went to his father and began his confession. You know the only thing that's necessary for you to come back to God Almighty? God is a good God. God is your creator. Last night I told you one of my favorite teachings of the Bible. When God says, listen guys and girls. He says, before I made you in your mother's womb, I knew you. Mm. Before you were born, I separated you. I gave you a message for the nations. God knows you girls and you guys. Before your mom and dad ever did what dads do to have a baby, he knew you. He knew the color of your eyes. He knew the color of your hair. He knew the name that your dad would give you. He knows you inside and out. And even though he knows you, and he knows all the garbage in your life, 
He loves you. And tonight, like Andrew was saying, if you will get up and stop making excuses, don't blame the church, don't blame the priests, don't blame the clergy, don't blame the minister. Let God deal with them. You fall on your knees before God and say, Oh God, it's a me, it's a me, it's a me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of forgiveness. That's repentance. Repentance is, this young man asked his dad for his, what he thought belonged to him, to, turned his back on his father and walked away. When he repented, he turned back to his father and he came humbly and said, make me like one of your workers. And so he was changed. And the father threw a party. And tonight, if you come back to God, I'll give you the invitation in a few moments. He will forgive all your sins. You say, how can he forgive me? And why Jesus Christ? You know why? Because he's the only one who died on the cross for the sins of the world. There are many religions in the world. And many religious leaders in the world. Yes, and they teach good things many times. But nobody died for the sins of the world except Jesus Christ, the Son of God, in, his, oh, in Jerusalem. So when you get up and you say, Oh God, I am so sorry that I walked away from you. Have mercy on me, oh God. I've sinned against you. I'm not worthy to become your child. The Lord will say, Now... That's what I want to hear. That's repentance. And then he came back to his dad. He knew that his dad was good. And he says to his father, Father, I've sinned against seven and against you. Make me like one of your workers. He knew his dad would forgive him. And if you really have a sensitive conscience and a tender heart, tonight the Lord says to you, Come to me, come to me, and I will forgive you. I will clean your heart. I will forgive it. And you know what I like about what the Bible says? Listen to this. God says, your sins and evil behavior, I will remember no more. No more. No more. God forgives and he forgets. And he is a good God. And he calls you tonight. But that's your decision. God has done it all. He not only created you in your mother's womb, He sees you, He knows you, He loves you, and He says, come back, come back. My child, give me your heart. And if tonight you say, yes, Lord, I'm going to do what Andrew did. No more excuses, no more explanations, no more running away. I fall before you, Lord Jesus, and I receive you into my heart. And the Bible puts it this way. The blood of Jesus, the Son of God, purifies from all sin. And right here, right now, if you will open your heart to Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus will purify your heart. The blood of Jesus will take away the guilt. You say, I don't understand it. Don't worry. You will understand it as the years go by. When Christ died on the cross, I told you last night, he had two thieves, one on the right one on the left. And Jesus hung for three hours on the cross. And the sins of the world were laid on him. And it became dark at noon in Jerusalem. And Jesus out of the darkness cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He knew why. He cried out rhetorically for your benefit and for mine. And he had a crown of thorns on his head. He'd been whipped 39 times. They spit on him. They slapped him around. And then the nails in his hands and in his feet. And on that cross, Jesus was the Lamb of God paying for the sins of the world. And about, about three in the afternoon, he cried out and said, It is finished. And he gave up his spirit. And from that day on, all of us, who have received Jesus Christ, have peace with God. 
Our conscience is clean. Our heart is new. And he sends the Holy Spirit into your heart. And you become a new person. But you have to make that decision yourself. And right now, he's calling you. And I want everybody to bow their heads right now in the presence of God. And I want to lead you in a prayer to receive Jesus Christ into your heart. My son Andrew, our son Andrew, he repented finally at age 27. Tonight, whatever your age may be, Jesus Christ is calling you by name. And he says, my girl, my son, give me your heart. And right now, Jesus Christ is knocking at the door of your heart. And he wants to take over and wash away all the guilt. And I want to lead you in a prayer of confession. I'd like to lead you in the name of the Lord to confess your sins to God Almighty. Whatever your background may be, He's calling you back. He's calling you home. And so let's pray. And as you pray, remember what St. Peter said in the Bible. Christ died for sins once for all. The righteous in place of the unrighteous to bring us to God. He wants to bring you to God today. Keep your head bowed and your eyes closed for a minute. And I want to remind you of what Christ said. To all those who receive him, who believe in his name, he gives them power to become children of God. And as you pray and you confess your sin, Jesus Christ will forgive you. He will come into your life and you'll become a new person. And from tonight on, you will know that you are a new person, that Christ lives in you, and you have supernatural power to overcome temptation and sin and evil. But the decision is yours. Nobody can do it for you. Not your dad or mom, not your brother or sister, not your roommate or your friend. You yourself have to open your heart to Christ. So pray this prayer. I'd like you to pray out loud in unison with the rest of the people to the living Christ. And I will guide you in confession and in receiving Christ. And then you're going to thank Him because of what He's done in your heart. So pray with me this prayer. Oh God, my Father, forgive me for my sins. I've walked away from you. Tonight I'm coming home. I'm not worthy to be called your child. I've sinned against you, Father. But I thank you for Jesus Christ, <clears throat> for his death on the cross, for suffering in my place, for giving his blood so that I could be washed. Tonight, Lord Jesus, I fall on my knees before you. I receive you into my heart. I want to walk with you, Lord. I want to be holy. I want to be clean. I want to have a clean mind, a pure heart. I want to be clean sexually. I don't want to get drunk. I don't want to do drugs. I want to walk with you, O oh God. And I surrender my life to you. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Take me into your home. Give me eternal life, O oh God. And I will serve you for the rest of my days. I will listen to your holy word. And I'm going to win others to Jesus Christ. Oh God Almighty. Thank you for my forgiveness. Now I'm yours forever. Because Christ lives in me. And I thank you in his name. Amen. amen and amen. Amen.